Got a pickup truck with a dog box Slam full of hounds that don't even stop A two-fold mail, Rambo's his name Spit on the screen, hell on game Got a little chip in the back of the pack She ain't real fast, but she's true on the track She's got to drive and she's got to go And that's why she's gonna run with us It's in the blood in your veins, you can't Striking gold, one of a kind that can't be sold. The hunting around is what it's all about. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. We're getting ready to get on the road here and head to Ricky Bryant's house. We're going to hunt some pups tonight and talk some pup training and discuss some of our methods we like to use, some we don't like to use, and share some stories. Should be very educational, should be a good time, and hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, make sure you leave it a like, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Yep. One spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you water. You should. So in between barks here, how do you like starting your pups? Cage coon. Cage coon? Yep. What age do you like to start messing with them? Between eight and nine months old. The pup will tell you when it's ready to start. When it starts acting like it's wanting to go hunting, when you go tell their dogs out, I start messing with them. Do it in the daytime, at night? I like to start mine in the day on a cage coon. Usually with an older dog. You get them a ten set barking at it in the cage so they're not scared. How much do you do that with a pup? 
And it all matters about the pup. I mean, all pups are different. Um, if I can turn two or three cage coons on a pup and it trees them, at that point it's time to start hunting it by itself. You can overdo it. And by overdoing it, what I mean is if you turn too many cage coons loose, they automatically, every time you turn them loose, think there's a coon right by your feet. It mm. takes the hunt out of the dog. Once a pup can track a coon and tree it out of the cage, at that point I start walking them around hot spots, cornfields, at night time. They're all tree none. Yep. That sounded way better. <laughs> <laughs> bit about cage coons and what age you do that so you answered that question already um, another question someone gave me was do you like to let pups run loose or keep them in a kennel mm. I've never let a pup run loose because I don't live where I can a lot of people let them run loose yeah they have great you know they start real easy um, preferably for me I start all my pups by just in the kennel and I take them to the woods and start pranking them cage coons do you do much work with drags or? Yep. yep. I'll uh, show a pup a dead coon, lay a drag down through the woods. I do it different. A lot of people, I don't leave the coon in the tree. I'll take the coon from that tree in a pouch, like a rabbit pouch or a squirrel pouch, mm -hmm. back to the truck. I don't want my pups doing anything by sight up a tree. I don't want them to use their eyes. I want them to only use their nose. So I won't leave the coon up the tree. Yeah. I just get the pump jack in the tree and using their eyes and mm -hmm. their nose. And Next question was, besides leading and loading and stuff like that, is there anything else really important before you start taking them to the woods? Um, I like for a pup to know its name, to come to me. To me, a handle on a pup means a lot. A lot of people, they don't want their dog to a street, and I'm the same way. But if it does get by a road, if I'm trying to catch it, or if timeout's called, and if I need to get it caught, I want it to come if I holler at it. So I do teach them to mine. That's about it. Uh, what about trash breaking methods? Someone, a couple people asked about skunks and possums. And that That's very of. hard. <laughs> I don't have a very good odd of breaking them on possum. I don't know why. Just me and possum and young dogs just don't get along. I have trouble breaking them. Yeah. But usually, if you kill a dog enough coons, it will break itself off trash. And I don't shock my pups for running deer. To me, that just makes them track. Pup can run a deer, it can run a coon. <laughs> I let them. I let them run that junk. <laughs> they'll break themselves, and you start putting that fur in their mouth. They'll, they'll slow down. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Scared the crap out of her. You almost. You about took me out, pup. <laughs> Good thing she's small. That right. Really hurt. Another question someone asks is. When you feel that you've invested enough time in one to know that if it's not going to make it, it's time to move on. It's hard. I mean, it's different for everybody. Myself, if I've turned a few cage coons loose on a pup and they don't show no interest, I'll lay it up a while. And I'll pull it back out the second time and start working it. If it still don't want nothing to do with a coon, that's it. Yeah. There are just too many dogs out there. And I've gave up on some pups that actually made it, but I gave up on them too soon. Have you ever had any luck when it comes to backtracking? Mm. It's a lot different. I mean, everybody's got their things on backtracking. To me, if a dog strikes hot and it gets colder as it goes, it's obvious going the wrong way. And I have poked on a few of them and they turned around and came back the right way and treated the coon. I killed a coon and helped. helped. The best way to do that's in the snow up here. When the snow's on the ground, them dogs, you can watch what they're doing. Yeah. You can get in there and see they're going wrong on that coon. It makes, and they make a lot of dents. Yeah. Do you hunt them pretty much by themselves when they're starting? Or 
I guess if you're starting them on cage coon and they start doing it on their own, you just hunt them by themselves for the most yep. part then. It's boring. I'll walk around, set on logs. Uh, once a pup can show me it can run a coon and tree a coon on a cage, at that point they can tree a hot coon in the woods. So I just walk around the hot spot that should be a coon and just do a lot of setting around. I kind of asked you about this before too. So like when you're walking, you're not just constantly walking through the woods. Nope. I'll walk 100 yards, set on a log for maybe 15 minutes. Walk another 100 yards, set back down another 15 minutes. Just hoping that pup will go on in there far enough to get struck and tree a coon. And usually after they do that a couple of times, they'll get the hint and just fire on in there and tree coon. But I don't whoop on a pup and try to make it go hunting. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but a pup will figure it out usually. She's getting in there now. Mm -hmm. How far is she? She ain't got a bird's idea. 400. You got birds out here? Not, not in Michigan. He's probably in that back cornfield then. That's a first, that's a wood chuck. That is the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah, me too. Three to groundhog. Besides your genetics, what are some of the key components you feel go into making a top coon hound? Number one thing in my eyes is hustle. If a dog don't have hustle, it ain't gonna cut it. I like a dog that can work a track and put a coon on the end. I don't want a hot nosed dog that just can fly around and treat coons. I want a dog that can hustle on the ground and get treated and have a coon that can work a track in there and treat it. What are some common training mistakes? I guess, like what, what are some things you see a lot of people do that you don't agree with or you haven't had luck with? The big thing I see is people rush a pup. They want to finish, they think a pup should be a dog that naturally trees coon, but it doesn't work that way. They get irritated, you know, they ain't got the patience when a pup don't want to go hunt and they want to whoop on it and make it go. That just sets the pup back, that makes it scared, I mean. There's a lot to training a pup and there's a lot of boring nights and there's a lot of nights I leave the house, I know I might not even make a tree, but I'm going to be out there and let the pup get used to the woods, you know, smell different things out there. Um, when you shoot coon down to a young dog, tie it back. You know, when the pup first starts, a lot of times you shoot them coons out alive and it eats that pup up, that just sets the pup back, makes it scared. All pups are different. Some pups that, you know, that will fire them up, but some pups that won't. I pretty much just hunt alone so much, I don't really know how a lot of people train. But <laughs> how I train is I tie my pups back and shoot that coon, and I make sure it's, I go over to it, make sure it's dead, then I throw the coon over to the pup. What are some things that can be trained and also things that can't be trained? has to have natural, it's got to have natural track and ability. I mean, to me, you can't make a dog run a track. It's, it's got to figure that out on its own. You can't make a dog tree. It's got to want a tree. The biggest thing I look to, look for for myself for a young dog is a dog that has a lot of hunt and hustle. If they ain't got the heart and the drive, they're just not going to cut it at my house. What about breeding dogs? Have you, I guess, do you kind of just get dogs from, you've had a lot of male dogs mm -hmm. that you've studded some, so do you just try and get dogs out, like out of crosses you like, or do you do it yourself too? I'm a true believer that if you breed coon dog to coon dog, you should get coon dogs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not one of these ones that want to run around and breed to stud dogs. I mean, myself, I kind of bred my local dogs that I just hunt local because I know they're coon dogs and I know what the, you know, their genetics are and how I trained them and how easy they were to train. That's kind of what I went with. No. I, I really like line breeding. Um, I took 
old Katie when I got old lumber when I kind of started my own stuff from the Devager line is I tripled up on old Hannah and she was Nocturnal Nailer that was a line breed cross three times her in there and I went from there with the Joe dog and now I'm going to start these other pups out of Joe and hopefully they turn out good too and go from there but I'm no to me, I'm not a promoter as a stud dog or anything like that. I just breed coon dog to coon dog to try to get me a nice young dog. Yeah. A lot of the walker breed these days got the same kind of blood back in them. I mean, they all go yeah. back to nail or sack it. I mean, there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. That's almost all the dogs have it in it. Yeah. Old lumber was out of, uh, I believe it's a niece and uncle cross. This is what I crossed old Katie back on was to you know I took an aunt and bred it to her nephew. That's what lumber was out of. Graber's B was lumber's dad. That was just pretty much all Devinger stuff, Junior Devinger. And I just liked that line of dogs. Yeah. Ballard and them guys have hunted dogs out of that same stuff. And Junior's just a great guy and good in the walker breed. Well, I was coyote hunting with some guy. I said, you know what, I'm going to take that female coyote hunting and get her open. And so I threw her in with that pack of dogs one day, and we ran a coyote around there. From that day on, she was a hunter's great. <laughs> She'd get that mouth open as soon as she smelled a coon, and would, would open good. But coon hunting her, I was coon hunting her and treating coons with her right along, but she would not bark on the ground. But getting in with that pack that day with them barking every breath got her opening. Hmm.